7.42, good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. And we're going to go through the papers now. Joining us this morning, GB News' senior political commentator, Nigel Nelson, and former Conservative advisor, Claire Pearsall. And lovely to see you both again. And we're starting with you, Nigel, on the Nigel Farage story, really, which is gaining momentum. It certainly is. It's lasted a month, in fact, this story, which is extraordinary. Most stories sort of uh, disappear after a couple of weeks. Um, but where we've got to now is that, obviously, with Alison Rowe, is the CEO of, Na of Nap West going. Uh, we've now seen the uh, CEO of Coots, uh, Peter Flavel, rightly going too. Rishi Sunak's being criticised for not following due process, which actually I think is a bit unfair. Um, I think it's quite right that they acted as soon as possible. And now... Uh, What's it got to do with Rishi Sunak? Well, it hasn't, has it? That's the point. In terms of the due process... Thing. Sorry, the, 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 there have been people criticising him for not not following the due process. So the Financial Conduct Authority being one. Uh, some Labour MPs are saying that it should have actually followed uh, followed a process. And it seems to me that we always call for politicians not to delay to actually do something. And mm. the, in this case, because it's so appalling, he did do something. And now Number Ten have withdrawn their support from uh, the chair, the chairman of um, NAP. West, Sir Howard Davis. Oh. So he could be the next one who's about to fall on his sword. I wonder if yeah. he will, because he seemed to be very... Um, well, some would say arrogant, um, in that he came out straight away and said that there was nothing wrong with what um, Dame Allison had done and that he was standing by her. He Which is a bit of a mistake, really. Well, it was a bit of a mistake, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he clearly thinks that, you know, it's not a problem. Yeah, but it, so did she. She seemed to think that she would cling on till, mm. till the end, until that strange sort of uh, board meeting in the, the middle of the night. So do you think his head will be the next to go? I do, yeah. I, I, mean, I just don't see how you survive this. Obviously, when it comes to the rest of the board, it rather depends who knew what. So in the event that this rather ridiculous policy was created by other people on this board, I can't see how they can survive either. But how can you seriously sit on a board that important and not know? That's and what even, I would have thought. Yeah, and even yeah. if you don't know, then you're actually not doing your job properly as a that's, member that's of the board. Also, that's so a fair point. So they should all go. I really. think they probably should, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Being sweet. I, I mean, I think the one thing that almost just then makes all of this worse, and I think you just mentioned it, Anne, in the, in the last piece, is the payout to Dame Allison because... If it's true. If it's true, and it's being reported, it's £5.2 million. Pounds. Now, for what she has done, for what she has presided over, I find that appalling. If this was a junior middle-managing bank clerk who had been rightly sacked for the same offence, they would be out on their ear without. Well, in any industry, nothing. that's sackable offence. Absolutely is. So then why you had to have this sort of golden goodbye package for something so serious, I think that is going to because be... Because that's the, other... the way our banks operate? Mm, yeah, that's, that's a lot the problem. of this needs to be sorted well, it out. It seems very odd if she's... Resi you don't normally get a payout if you resign. Do you sometimes get a payout if you're fired, but you don't get a payout if you resign? I think it's a whole different ball game once you get to that kind of level, which is the the real problem, as Claire said. That if you were just an ordinary clerk and had done what uh, she did, you're out, nothing. You'd lose your pension rights, everything. Um, when it comes to something like this, that if you get that high up, you tend to find a way of actually getting a package if you have to go. Oh, well, mm. I mean, it's a different world, isn't it? Um, let's have a look, Claire, at the Times um, because they're they're looking at housing migrants apparently in in well tents basically yeah and this is uh, yet another bright idea from the home office to deal with the problem of uh, asylum seekers entering the united kingdom it is reported that many more will come over within the summer months. I mean, who knew that good weather would bring people over? <laughs> I think we've been around this block <laughs> before. But putting People into marquees. Now, if this is a temporary measure, very temporary, I can understand it. But they're saying, we will ensure that we have these migrants out by the winter. OK, well, it's now the end of July. How many do you think are coming across and what are you doing about that? And also, once they are in marquees, let's just park the conditions within a marquee in the United Kingdom during some wet weather. Mm. What are you doing about them? Because if you're saying this is a temporary measure and you're going to move them on, well, to where? 
and in what capacity. So, again, it's the Home Office and the government not looking at the entire issue surrounding the crisis that we have in this country with people coming in. They haven't got a clue how to deal with it, so all they're doing is putting these sort of sticking plaster policies together at the last minute. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I know the idea is it saves on hotel bills. So I say, but the what on shorts. earth do you do about sanitation and all the rest of and it? This is, and we've seen this in Manston Airport, in the immigration holding place mm. in Manston last year, which is designed to hold temporarily 1,000 people, had 4,000 living there mm. in conditions that are not fit for what anybody. What about our Nightingale hospitals? What's happened to them? I think they'll be dismantled. After, oh, yeah. after they were they not were used during the, during, yeah. during COVID. But they went back to it because one was in the Excel centre. Yes, that's true. So it's yeah. like they were already... I was just wondering if there were big... You know, because they had but it shows you can... yes. they had facilities. Yeah, yeah but, you're, but what it does show is how quickly you can construct yes. something like that if you need it. I mean, yeah. these are the kind of things they should be thinking mm. about. Um, what they're trying to do is pretend that, you know, this is... They're going to stop the boats. It's all going to go away. And it, it's not. No. No, you can see if this happens that in a couple of months' time we'll be talking about what about all those poor people in these marquees <laughs> well, <clears throat> and we will facing all... a winter and, and they'll still be it. there. This is it. I mean, haven't we all seen things like, you know, at Glastonbury or Reading Festival mm. where it is a mud pit with people in tents and coming out absolutely covered and you sort of say, well, you've chosen to go and do that and that's your festival experience, but this is going to be that on a larger scale and the sanitation and the illness that comes from it is not funny. This is it. It is no. serious. Um, Nigel, can we have a look at the triple lock? Because the Express is claiming Labour would scrap the, or could scrap. The yes, triple I mean lock. at the moment the Labour the Labour is still committed to the triple log. Um, I mean I do think it, it needs to be. We need to take a look at it on the basis that um, one in four people will be over sixty five in, in the next twenty years. We're getting to a stage where pensions are becoming really tricky um, to be able to pay for them, and you've also got a sort of fairness element there that with the triple lock, um, pensions are either increased on inflation earnings or two and a half percent whichever is higher now of course this year inflation was higher so you saw pensioners getting um, over 10 percent public sector workers are getting five and six percent and there is a question of fairness about that whether or not that should have been spread across and I'm not bashing pensioners or anything like that I'm just saying that perhaps we have to rethink about how pensions work perhaps make them more flexible people work longer therefore um, they could take pensions a bit later uh, but if we don't we're heading for a big crisis on the pension front oh, there's no easy answer to that I can hear people now throwing mm. stuff at the television yeah. at you, Nigel. But... Yeah, I can feel my Twitter feed just exploding. <laughs> yeah, but I know what you mean. It's got to be paid for. Mm. But anyway, uh, look, we've got to leave it there, sadly. Bit of a quick one this hour. Uh, Nigel, Claire, we'll see you a little bit later on.